That's my last duchess painted on the wall, looking as if she were alive. I call that piece a wonder now. Fra Pandal's hands work busily a day, and there she stands. Would please you sit and look at her? I said Fra Pandolf by design, for never read strangers like you that pictured countenance. The depth and passion of its earnest glance, but to myself they turned, since none puts by the curtain I have drawn for you but I, and seemed as they would ask me, if they durst, how such a glance came there. So, not the first are you to turn and ask thus. Sir, t'was not her husband's presence only, called that spot of joy into the Duchess's cheek. Perhaps Fra Pandolf chanced to say, her mantle laps over that lady's wrist too much, or paint must never hope to reproduce the faint half-flush that dies along her throat. Such stuff was courtesy, she thought, and cause enough for calling up that spot of joy. She had a heart, how shall I say, too soon made glad, too easily impressed. She liked what air she looked on, and her looks went everywhere. Sir, t'was all one. My favourite her breast, the dropping of the daylight in the west, the bough of cherries some officious fool broke in the orchard for her, the white mule she rode with round the terrace, all and each would draw from her alike the approving speech, or blush at least. She thanked men, good, but thanked somehow, I know not how, as if she ranked my gift of a nine hundred years old name with anybody's gift. Who'd stoop to blame this sort of trifling? Even if you had the skill in speech, which I do not, to make your will quite clear to such an one, and say, just this or that in you disgusts me. Here you miss, or there exceed the mark. And if she let herself be less than so, nor plainly set her wits to yours, forsooth, and made excuse, and then would be stooping, and I choose never to stoop. Oh, sir, she smiled, no doubt, whene'er I passed her, but who passed without much the same smile? This grew, I gave commands, then all smiles stopped together. There she stands as if alive. Will please you rise? We'll meet the company below them. I repeat, the Count your master's no munificence is ample warrant that no just pretense of mine for dowry will be disallowed, though his fair daughter's self, as I avowed at starting, is my object. Nay, we'll go down together, sir. Notice Neptune, though, taming a seahorse, thought a rarity, which Klaus of Innsbruck cast in bronze for me. The Last Duchess, written by Robert Browning, narrated by Jordan Harling.